So the last major control room feature in Cubase is the external input. There are a couple more odds and ends, and I'll cover those in a later video, but I'll show you first how to set up external inputs and what they're for. External inputs are any inputs that you'd want to bring directly into your monitoring environment. So let's say you have a DVD player or a CD player or an MP3 player you want to have and be able to listen to through the monitor environment of the control room. And say you could use it as a comparison. So you've got the current mix loaded into your Cubase session. And you've got a previous mix loaded onto your MP3 player and you want to A-B compare them, for example. You can do that with external inputs. You can also use external inputs to bring in samples from other sources like a portable recording device because external inputs can also be recorded directly into Cubase. So the first thing we'll do is set one up. And of course we're going to go back to VST Connections. We're going to add channel external input, you can have up to six of them. External input one, stereo configuration. And then I'm going to assign my external input to inputs number three and four on my audio interface. And I'm also going to set, because I have an iPod set up on those inputs. And I'm also going to set up one more external input channel just for explanation purposes when you get into the mixer it'll, it'll become evident why. So one more here and I'm going to leave this unassigned because it's really not important. It's just important that we have two so that it makes sense when we go to the mixer. So I'm going to close this and you'll notice that right away we have more GAC on the control room mixer and you can choose between external inputs. Again you can have up to six. Currently we've chosen external input number one. But there's also another one, external input number two, and you choose between them there. And also in our input monitoring section here, you'll notice that we now have external inputs as selectable sources for our monitoring. So you can have external input source coming into control room channel or any studio channel or both. So if I go over to the control room here and select external input, I've already selected external input number one over here, and if I hit play on my iPod, you'll hear that I'm playing my iPod. You're hearing my iPod through the control room mixer in Cubase. Now, of course, this doesn't affect Studio One channel unless you select him to be hearing external input number one, but he can also be listening to his own auxiliary sends, and I can start my project here. So the project is playing. I happen to be listening to my external input, but I can also switch uh, back to my main mix and then back again so it's just another way to uh, have another input into the directly into the control room mixer it's really kind of handy when you start to think about it because you can just get easily get uh, external sounds into Cubase and be able to audition them or listen to them right while you're sitting there and not have to set up anything special to do it the other thing that's important to know is that external inputs are recordable directly into Cubase. So if you set up an audio channel and select its input as the external input that you want, you can record that external input directly into Cubase to that audio track. And that's a great way to bring in external samples from a Zoom recorder or anything similar to that. So that's what the external inputs do, and they can be used for all kinds of inventive things, along with a lot of the other features of the control room. You just have to sort of use your imagination. Don't go by just what I've mentioned in my tutorials here. In the next video, I'm going to discuss the headphones channel, which can be a little bit confusing, and uh, go over the inserts in the control room. So stay tuned.